hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> Hardcore boxing fans, uh, it's not uh, the usual video that I, I normally do. Uh, this today, it's uh, it's uh, a tribute video to uh, our good friend Pete Pete Bell, who sadly passed away on seventh of March. Now, I first met Pete in 1991. And obviously I spent a lot of time with him up to 1996 because I were incarcerated the uh, majority of that time. And I never listened at first to everything he told me but it all came true. Uh, and he, he was fantastic for me. For me and people like my friend Alan, Alan Mangum, who uh, I think he played professional rugby, Alan. Off to a very high standard. Uh, we were, what do they call it, in America, sellers. We were cellmates in Moreland's, me and Alan. And we used to tell, we used to tell Pete, there used to be Pete Bell stories. We used to go around the jail all the time, whether you were in Lindholm or next door in Moreland's. And he was like a legendary figure. And I'm sure all, a lot of boxing people who might have been in prison uh, in, in Lindholm. In Lindholm or Moreland's, I'm just pull up here and strap this gimbal in. Uh, I might have been in Lindholm or Moreland's, they would have come across Pete Bell. They were only a little guy, you'd, you'd probably say you were a lightweight if you were a fighter, super feather maybe. He reminds me, he reminds me of Jim McDonnell. James, James is a 15 round fighter, beautiful James, beautiful. Pete Bell reminds me of Jim McDonald, same sort of wiry build, fit as a butcher's dog. I used to do it circuits with us now. I was never a big fan of Pete Bell's circuits. Two, two laps round and then you choke it up on board. Uh, but he used to do two a day. Now, if Pete's just passed away at 72, he were doing two a day in 91 so what's that 29 year so that, that'd make him 43 he was doing well I'm 50 in October I was born in 1970 October so if Pete's we're doing two a day at 43 what does that say about me today and now we're 11 stone wet through and I'd like to think that I was fit as a butcher's dog when I were in there because he had us all super fit but he was super human fit Pete he had a fast metabolism. I remember when he used to fetch curry over and share it out with everybody. He was brilliant. Just a, I don't like to use the word, this word for somebody that I like, but he was a cons screw, Pete. Uh, what I mean by a cons screw, I mean, you could go to him with any problems. I mean, when I was 21, when I first went there, I'd just turned 21. 21 in about four or five weeks, I was. Christmas, I went there, day before Christmas Eve, 91. Um, at the time I was going out with a girl up here, who worked at uh, Solicitors, I'm not going to say her name, but she was a lovely lass, and I just kept pushing her away all the time, I just didn't, you, you did, you, I didn't know what was happening to myself, obviously I'd only done a, a detention centre as a 16 year old, and I went in as a 20 year old YP all, turned 21, pump, sent to, sent to Lindo. Uh, after a few wee con cons in all, as, a, as an adult. And um, it's made my stay there a lot easier. In them days, you used to work in cabbage fields in prison. And in the afternoon, you had gym. What are you doing, mate? 1.45 till 3.45, gym. How's about that for a gym session? Two hour, 15 minute gym session. That's brilliant, isn't it? But they don't do that now, do they? Well, Pete Bell fought for all that to say, look, sports and education is the way forward. And, and I think he got his own way as regards the the gym. You, you know, you went, you could either go morning or afternoon, see you later, alligator, in the swamp. In the swamp, our kid, pipping me. You know I am. Uh, 
he uh, fought for gym fought lads and education and stuff like that and I don't think the system were with him putting lads to f listen when I were working in them cabbage fields in rain and everything I was like that oh I can't wait to get to gym in the afternoon you were thankful for it but that's I don't think that's way to re re rehabilitate people education and gym's the way forward and Pete were a visionary I think and he, he, he knew when to put his arm around you and when to shout and we used to call him Mighty Mouse because he was loud as old. When he entered the room you knew he were in the room, he, were, he was an intimidating, imposing figure for a man about probably, I don't know, 5'7", five, 5'6", five, 9 stone wet through, maybe 9 and a half. A very imposing guy because he would come in your cell and he would have it with you. And he wouldn't nick you if you got a punch in, because he'd have got a few in. He wouldn't nick you. I don't, I, can't, I don't know anybody that he ever nicked, right? Unless you had to, you had to do something really bad for to be put on a governor's with Pete Bell. He was just a proper. He was a con screw, wasn't he? He's just top blow. The waiting list to get in that gym as a gym orderly were unbelievable. Of course, he used to do. Uh, he used to do the charity stuff with Brendan Ingle, I'm just going up by here now. Uh, he used to do the old charity stuff. Everybody would pay two quid, you get four or five hundred people in there paying two quid. Old screws would go. And uh well, has he has he gone too far off cook at him here? Look at this here. Unbelievable, and they used to raise money for charity, stuff like that. So you've got to give him respect. He deserved respect, Pete. Respect is earned. He's following me, him. He's going to be up my. He's been following me all morning. Him. Every time I, I leave him at traffic lights, he wants to pip. Get a grip of yourself, in your lot. Go drop your Yorkie bars off. But. They did that every single year at Lindown Prison, the charity stuff. Um, I just thought it was brilliant. And I never got picked out. I used to say, come on Pete, get me picked out. I want to spar some of these here. We trained all year, Ryan Rhodes. I remember going, me and my, what well, I think my cellmate from, from my part, we put his name in out, we never got picked out. But fair firm, but fair Pete Bell and he'll be missed and there'll be a few Tears shed at his funeral, I know that. Proper lovely bloke, family man, hard worker, builder as well, I believe. His own building business. So you can't knock him, provided for his family. He's got lovely kids, lovely family, just, just a top bloke. Just a top bloke and. I'm going to go see Dennis this morning and Dennis is going to add a few words to this and I'm going to, I'm going to get uh, my team to put a few photos in and jazz it up a little bit. Uh, I think when people, somebody dies we all want to do something don't we but what, what do you do, what do you say? I'm, I've only ever been to one funeral in my life. to be something that I really thought a lot about to go to a funeral for me. I suppose you could say two funerals if you count Dennis's dad's but that were more of a celebration of his life because he weren't buried, he weren't cremated, they were frozen. So yeah, that's a bit so it was like a celebration until they get a cure but it weren't nice to see Pete on that, uh, I went with Dennis, we went to see him on eight days before he died, we went to see him obviously, they call it on your deathbed don't they, so it's not very nice is it, and he looks so frail and that, and his voice were going and that, oh horrible to see man, it really upset me, not nice at all, uh, not, not nice at all. Uh, must, must have been awful for his family. I 
I mean, I was texting Pete and everything, he's coming to watch Josh Wales' show. So yeah, I'm looking forward to him. Josh Wales is a good kid, isn't he? I'm like, yeah, we signed him in April, and he's going to be four and out after this fight, and we're going to push for a world title next week, and we're right excited. And he kept saying to me, you've done really well, really well, Russ, to turn it around. And I don't think, I don't know if I have, to be honest, turned it around. What, what, what I want to turn it around, but considering how I used to live my life before, yeah, I suppose it's 500% isn't it, but hey listen, I'm the last person to get advice now. Any day I can just, somebody could just say something to me, cut me up at a junction, if I'm in wrong frame of mind, my fist's going through a window isn't it, and I'll be doing six months or something, or, I don't know, it, Everybody deals with things differently, don't they? You can only take good advice, can't you? But give me loads of encouragement, even to end saying I'm proud of you. And uh, Alan Langham is closer to, to, to Pete than me. Uh, they were really tight, them two. Because Pete were a rugby man, on it. Donny Rovers, he loved rugby. Boxing. Sport is the way forward, he used to say. If you were on bang up, he'd come and get you out for gym. He'd say, come on. He'd go like that. It's a true story, that. Ask anybody who, who, who met him. He were a proper author, people that tried. And I just think that it's so, so sad. Worked hard all his life. 72. Look at me, 50, what have I got, 20 years? Joe Frazier once said, all them people that have done this in their life, you know, like, drink, drugs, been fighters, took punishment, it will come back to bite you. Look at Pete, I don't even think he drank, drank. I don't think he did, you know. No, he didn't smoke, I don't think. It, uh, what lane are you in, Mush? Like, so. There you go, that's how you get through that, mate. Uh, I just think that the proper top bloke, and he'll be missed, sorely missed, man. And what people don't know, a lot of people who are watching this, Mr. Jamie McDonnell was 8 2 and 1. 8 2 and 1, coming off the back of two defeats. Pete Bell rung Dennis up and he said, Dennis, I've got a kid here for years, going to win a world title. Can you imagine how many people get in touch with Dennis's office? You want to see my inbox for emails? I'm all at tea, boy. You want to see the people want to, want to work with Dennis now. Dennis says, OK, I'll have a look at him. He had one look at him, he took Jamie McDonald to the Olympics. Right? Don't forget, he's already a professional at the time. We've gone the Olympics. Don't forget Pete's ex-boxer, so he knows a lot about the game. Like a guru. We've gone the Olympics. Dennis has said, right, this is how you train, this is how you eat, this is how you rest. He's copied all Olympians, Jamie. Let me tell you this, Jamie's not a boxing person. He once said to Dennis, Dennis says, look at him over there, Jamie, Sugar Ray Leonard. He says, what are you any good, Dad? That's Jamie's mentality, but Jamie soaked it up like a sponge at the Olympics. They came back, they went British Commonwealth, European and a world title at Donny Rovers football ground on the pitch. They created history, Doncaster's first world champion. Nobody can take that away from Pete Bell or Dennis, nobody. Nobody can take that away. Nobody. And, uh, they went 13 and 0, and obviously we know what happened, don't we? Somebody were whispering in Jamie's ear, and, the, and you know he let himself down. But nobody can take the achievement away. Pete Bell never took a penny out of that. Not a penny. That's why I respect him like myself. Don't take a penny. Not hard at boxing. If there's any other pennies knocking about, I'll take a lot of them. But not out of boxing, because there isn't any there, is there? All these people are getting, that keep saying, oh yeah, there's uh, there's plenty of in boxing. They're in. You've got to get in it for love of sport, for achievement. 
if it were all about money, uh, De Dennis wouldn't have achieved what he's achieved, would he? And Pete Bell would, would, would uh, have been going around saying, I've got this kid here, but I want a drink for him. And he never, he never, he never did that. He said, I've got somebody here, can you help him out? And that's the type of guy he was, just the simple things. For example, he always used to say, you've got to get the simple things right, go to work, and play a little bit if you have to. Go to work, provide for your family, pay all your bills. You got the basics right. And that's why I think you were wasted in prison system. Somebody like that who's respected. The wasted. I mean they have famous ex boxers, don't they? And celebrities going around jails now trying to talk to people, but when I when I, when I were in and, in and out in and out all that time, I ten year over a twelve year period, there were nobody to other than Pete, but I don't think they, they were a guy, they were an officer, a, a, well, a screw at all, actually, who were all right with us when we were YPs, but other than that, there were, I didn't really meet that many good, good uh, screws who I respected. Too many, of, too many of them, in my opinion, just wanted to bring pain down on you. I didn't help myself in there at the time with, with my behaviour, because I was on, always on basic regime, but... I just think that Pete Bell were wasted in there, and I think, I think, I'm not sure, but I think, I don't, I don't, sorry, I don't think he even were promoted in there, I think he just stayed what he wanted to be, you know, it were running gym, he worked man in that gym, what he said went, what he said went, he brought loads of fights up, detested bullying, detested bullying, Oh, let me tell you this. This is a true story, this. Fraggle Rock, they used to call it, didn't they? F-Wing in Lindon. I know somebody who were getting, having a hard time on there. He went and told somebody. They told Pete Bell. Pete Bell went round to the kid's cell. Walked in, locked door, walked in, sat down. Let's just say, let's just say words were exchanged. That kid were all right then. I mean, because if Pete hadn't have done that, and this kid at the top to his sent, because that goes on in there, you know. These young kids, 21 year old, 22 year old. I must admit, I were a bit quiet when I were in there, when I was 21. I was loud as a YP, but when I went over to the cons, I was like, <laughs> my bum was squeaking a bit. And obviously, as I got into my mid 20s, I started to get a bit more confident in there, but Pete Bell couldn't have had, and he'll tell you. He couldn't have had somebody hanging the set if he knew somebody were getting bullied. You have to go act. You, or if you want to go do it through screws and that, you, you, you'd, have, you'd have to have ten meetings before they can decide what to do. Not Pete Bell. Straight round to bully's cell. <laughs> Straight into the cell, no messing about. No messing. Proper man's man. And he'd be sorely messed. What are you doing, love? What are you, what are you doing? Come on, I'm not letting you in, mate. I don't let nobody in me in the morning. Nine o'clock in the morning, letting people in. Naughty, naughty. So, I'm going to have a chat with Den when he gets here. Um, reminisce about our pal Pete. Well, a proper man's man. Somebody that you'd be proud to say, you know, he's my dad or he's a mate or I know him. Or I spent time with him and I didn't spend that much time outside of prison with him, apart from text messages, for, uh, and obviously I went to see him before he passed. Uh, oh, it's so, it's awful, man. So far like that, I'm, when I was a kid, I was always sheltered from funerals. Uh, me and my brother, we don't, we don't even go to my grandma's or my grandma's, uh, we sheltered from the first one I went to in 2000. And, 2012, my, and obviously I went to Dennis's dad's three years ago, but that was like a, I suppose you could call it a funeral, couldn't you, but something I've not, I don't, it's, it's hard to experience, it must be awful for Pete's family, but like I said, what a bloke, and he couldn't have got any 
anything else out of his life, I don't think. I would have liked to have seen him go till he was about 100 because you would have thought somebody super human fit. I'm talking super human. One of my pals who just had his 50th, he, uh, from, from Hyde Park, he was ex-boxer. And he used to do circuits, because uh, not many used to do them. And he used to say, I can't believe times Pete Bellets. That's just proper circuit training, isn't it? Old school circuit training. And how many boxers now watching this or people, trainers, and there'll be a few. There's a few watching this. How many can say they do but do the how many can say they do the circuits? I bet there's not many, is there? You got plenty of time on this? I bet there's not many. So Alright, so I'm gonna add something to this. It's gonna be probably about an hour long this. So okay. So that's not here yet. Uh that park over there I think. Oh, hang on. I'll pull in Dennis's spot, shall I? <laughs> Miss Money Penny's late today, so that's about it, really. A uh, bit of a talk there. I hope I didn't bore anybody who I've said nothing out of turn. I just thought Pete Bell was just a great bloke and, and he touched my life and many people's lives. And the main thing is, nobody had a bad word to say about Pete Bell. Nobody had a bad word to say, to, nobody had a bad word to say about him, but everything he said come true regarding there's no shortcuts if you want anything it's like for example I'm not being big headed than that but I used to drive around in bags of crap obviously you know my, my looks change now but I've put the effort in to buy the things that I, I've, I've wanted uh, and he used to say there's no shortcuts I mean I, I, I used to nick BMWs when I were a teenager and I spoke to Pete about it in the and he, and he used to say, uh, there's no shortcuts to success or to getting what you want. You've got to save a bit and then build it up and get, and then you can get what you want. You can't just go out and risk in your freedom, you know, for cheap thrills and that. And like I said, he were right, but it took a long time for me to uh, put a penny to drop. But everything he said came true. And he always used to say to me, and the same thing Dennis says to me, he used to say, be honest, and if you mess up and you're honest, you'll be all right, you'll be okay. Can you imagine how many times I've messed up here? We've had world champion fighters phoning here, complaining, because I've said what I've said on my channel, being honest. But these people, they don't phone me, do they, for a debate? They phone Den, and they try and cut me off from there, but... I ain't going nowhere, am I? I think people know after five years now that I'm not going anywhere. But, you know, uh, I don't help myself at times, but being honest, I will always be honest on here. It's all you can do, isn't it? But, like I said, Pete Bell, a fantastic, just a fantastic man. Character man. Character. He's one of them people, he will go up to the biggest bully in the gym if anything were going on in prison so he'd make you put all the weights away and he'd come straight up to you he'd go to the biggest one and he'd take the biggest one out you know he'd say come in and hear you you'd take him into where they do circuits and badminton and he'd nip it in the bud like I say he was just a great a great bloke bloke and I'm gonna miss him a lot I'm gonna miss him a lot I know Dennis was really upset when I told him on the phone, really upset. They achieved a lot, didn't they? What they did. It's just, uh, it's not nice. But I hope he's resting in peace. Um, I hope that his legacy lives on. It will anyway, because there won't be anybody who can run that place, that asylum, like Pete used to do. 
that gym. He was the man in the jail anyway. Nobody had any respect for anybody else who worked there who had a set of keys. Nobody. Nobody. Them gym sessions were packed and that's just Pete, isn't it? Everything, football, cricket, rugby, boxing, everything. They just it made it enjoyable. It made a dark cloud hanging over your head. It made it, it. You could like escape, couldn't you, for them few hours? You could escape. Obviously, some people tried to escape over the fence, didn't they? But but you you could escape in that gym, and you could have a crack, and you pick his brains, and you know, just and it'd get you an extra time on your visit and stuff like that, and. If you ended up in a fight or you ended up in block, he'd come and see you in it block, he'd just come to a flap and he'd go like that. And he'd go, you'll be all right, you'll get through it, it's only seven days. The guy did five days in block there. He's just a good bloke and uh, he'll be missed, he'll be missed. So, all right, so I'm just gonna, I'll do an interview with Dennis and that, I'll do something a bit later on and we'll finish it off, so. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Dennis, some, uh, what's that? I don't know. Oh. Is that for me? Oh, it must be for me. Scott. Yeah, okay. Uh, Pete Bell's passed away, Dennis. I know. It's, Devastated. Uh, we went to see him, didn't we, a uh, week before oh, he died? Really, really. Took wind out of my sails out when you told me that news yesterday. I didn't know. Absolute gentleman, a man's man, um, dear to me heart, and uh, I didn't see him often enough anyway. But uh, I know he was always there. I know he'd always got a lot of respect for me and spoke about me in glowing terms as I did him. So just a proper man. I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased me and you went to see him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I could see he, everything was genuine. You could see there were a, a lovely bond between us. Um, Another great fella sadly left us, so sorry for him as his loss and his uh, sorry for his lo his family's loss, but uh, it's not just his family; it's us. I mean, obviously they're going to feel it a lot worse than us, but it's our, it's it's, it's uh, we've lost another good one. How did uh, how did you come to meet Pete Dennis? Uh, to be honest, I can't remember, but but you know, like. Uh, Sheffield, Yorkshire's a bit of a village in a way, isn't it? And yeah. uh, and especially boxing, through boxing, mm. people, um, what's the word? Uh, what's migrating? It's a small it's community, a, isn't yeah, it? Boxing, isn't towards it? each other. And um, I'd spoke to Peter once or twice, and then uh, I forgot how I ever met him. But then, he, then obviously, the big, the big story was when he brought, he went, Dennis, I've got a kid here who I think you could help win things and his name's Jim McDonald. can I come and see you, I bring him to you, I went, of course I can, uh, if, if you say he's, he's, he's got something about him Pete, obviously I respect it uh, and he brought him with his, with, uh, with Jamie's stepdad and um, and obviously the rest is history because of uh, what we went on to do but 13 it, and 0 weren't you then, if British you think about it, European yeah world. I got something to work with but without Pete bringing Jamie to me, where would Jamie have got to? There'd be no Gavin, would there? Well, we are at Jamie McDonald, there'd be no Gavin, because uh, the job I added on on, on, on uh, Jamie, obviously, encouraged Gavin to take, because he were, he, were, he were a weightlifter at the time, weren't he? He were a bodybuilder. Gavin, yeah. Um, so, you know, but, but it, if you think what the catalyst was in it all, it were, it were Pete Bell. Um, you so said, in, in yeah. a way, he could say Jamie. The reason Jamie became a world title champion is is because of Pete Bell bringing him to me. Yeah, Pete Bell started the ball rolling. Didn't he, did. he spotted he did. it. Don't forget, I'm not saying Jamie were on scrap heap then. We know he was. He were on basically going nowhere. What two defeats? He just had, he had a draw. Two domestic defeats. So where Chris were Edwards going? beat him and uh, I forgot. Askins. Him, Matt the Askins. Uh, so where would he have gone? Um, and if you think on the back of that, with McDonald going to Steffi Bull's gym, it, it gave them a kickstart and, and, and people 
when when I got Clinton to a world title, our gym filled up yeah. because you're a world champion in the gym. Because you're a world champion in the gym at Steffi's, obviously his gym fills up. So it gives, from that it gives people a big kickstart and the catalyst who started it all off were Peter Bell. Pete Bell, yeah. And do you know what? When I were in prison with Pete and he, he pushed for sports and education, he would always fight in the system, he was always anti establishment. Do you remember when he told us that he never got promoted, no, he always stayed at the same. I don't know about anti establishment, I think it's more like uh, adding to it, which yeah, is going to help it, yeah. help the establishment, yeah. where they, 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 a lot of people, it's like in government. I'm, I'm a businessman, what you call an entrepreneur, and I'm, I'm not um, university, excuse me, educated and stuff like that, but I'm a doer, I'm practical, and I'm, I'm successful. I don't win everything. But you've got people running the country who've never had practical experience from the bottom to the top like I have. So what Pete were doing within that system, excuse me, we're, we're trying to add practical experience of what can make a difference to some of these kids who are going nowhere and, and they don't feel that they're going anywhere. Um, and the people from the top are getting it out of the book, this is how we think you should they should be treated and Peter's saying hold on a minute let's introduce more sport mm -hmm. into the into the routine of these kids yeah. and let them think feel good about themselves because they don't know if they're talented or not let's see if there is some talent there because it's a way out of this cycle of crime in yeah. and out and yo yo in and out of prison so Peter changed a lot of pe pe people's lives and a lot of uh, people ex ex convicts were, were, uh, would have ended up back in the system if it weren't for Pete. Well, he didn't agree with working in cabbage fields at Lino. He used to say it was a waste of time because he, he used to say that you, it'd make lads angry and they'd want, they'd want to rebel. Yeah. Whereas yeah. if you can give them education and sports, there, there has been a few, there's been a few success stories from people that he's given advice to. I'd like to think, give me a good advice and eventually I'll listen. Alan Mangum, who was my cellmate, he ended up doing really well in rugby. Like, he was Pete's right hand man in jail, always with him. Brought in prison. Yeah, he was captain at rugby team and all that. If you played Escape ball. Escape to victory. Yeah, 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 that's the one, yeah. yeah. Which one would you have been in, Escape to victory? Well, when I went captain at the football team, I played in uh, a closed jail. <laughs> but is, Pete yeah. used to take him out in a minibus to play other teams and, and that. That were at coronavirus. That were at coronavirus. But. He were, he, were, he were a con screw, in other words, he were alright. He'd come in, he'd, hey listen, but I said earlier on, on way up here, I did a video, somebody were getting bullied in there, and it word got back to Pete Bell. When they, at dinner time, they have like a lockdown for roll count. Everybody comes back about 12 o'clock, have a dinner. He locked up while half one. Pete Bell went round to kid's cell, lay his turn in and had a little sit down with him, and kid never bothered other kid again. But if that kid had gone and told a screw about it, oh, he would have been all sorts of palaver, wouldn't they? He'd have been known as a grass or this and that. So Pete nipped it in bud, and I said, why did you do that? And he said, well, I don't want somebody hanging the sense of that, do I? By the time he's gone through red tape and all that, he might be dead. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Proper, proper, proper compassionate bloke who, uh, who called a spade a spade, stood his ground, a strong man, fit fella. Just uh, just an absolute proper man. And, yeah. Uh, sadly, sadly, left us and uh, yeah. it's a big, it's a big 72 loss. Seventy-two as well, and he had he had record then for circuits as well. You know. I could tell he were a fit fella. You oh. know, even when he were, he looked ill when he were ill last week when we seen him, um, you could tell even his physique. You could tell yeah. he'd been yeah. a fit fella. Yeah. Uh, it's just. You know, he reminds me of Dennis. His physique, Jim McDonald. Right. He's that ty that yeah, type yeah. of physique, isn't he? You know, yeah. Jim McDonald, right? Yeah. Wiry and addicted yeah. to training and that. Uh, but do you remember when he said, though, that he couldn't get any more out of his life, what he'd done? But I always think there's more to come. You know, but you, they, you know when they, you've got the experience, there's always, you know, they, can, they can always add some more to life because the experience he's had, you can't buy. Yeah. And you can always pass that experience on when people's willing to listen, if they've got any sense to listen mm. to somebody like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, you listen to him, I can listen to him, you know, I could sit down and talk to him all day. 
Pete, um, just a proper man in, 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 a, in a society now that's sadly lacking people coming through mm. like Peter. He should be somebody now, if he were like 40 year old, to be going round all jails doing talks and just checking system up like they do now with Xboxes and that they send them all around don't they? He, he'd be doing that now if he were if he were a bit younger Pete I think. Yeah I probably agree with you. Yeah. So, but he, he, yeah he, he, he was like the crossover yeah. between the establishment and, and the cons. He was like a cons. buffer in between wasn't Yeah he? he was somebody who could bring that people gap together. together and get people to see sense and change their life for the better instead of just seeing in that cycle of just committing so, so a lot of a, a, a stupid crime. Yeah, there's some fellows who was in, in prison who's made a lot of money, um, but a lot of the cons are, are like just serial, um, uh, you know, committing. They do it as soon as they get out, they're going to commit another crime, and like they think, well, that's just the way. And uh, to get out of that cycle, so because they're only only going to be in and out. What if they have a family? What what are they showing the kids? So you, you, how do you break that cycle? Well, Pete was one of the fellas, few men in this country who, who were capable of doing that. Yeah. I mean, look what he did with all charity and that. He used to do all boxing and that, didn't he? You know, at Christmas and that, mm. and get Brendan Ingalls team mm -hmm. to go down Ryan Road, Johnny Nelson, all them used to go down and he used to raise a thousand pounds every Christmas. Brilliant. But it's going to be sadly missed, so I hope uh, he's resting in peace then. I hope so. Yeah. so I've love enjoyed you, doing that, Miss Pete. You, love you to bits, Pete. And love to your um, family. And uh, we'll see you one day, but just not yet, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, we never know, do we, Paul? But uh, yeah. uh, well, he, he is somebody who has made his mark on this earth, and uh, there's a lot who, who pass through without making the mark of Pete's done. So, yeah. Love to you, Pete, and your family. Yeah. All right. Well, peace out. <laughs> you like that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PokyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>